time now for my banner. Uh, but just before the little break, we're talking Ebola. And so I want to continue that discussion just a little bit before I come to the real reason uh, that I'm raising my banner this morning. My guest is Chief Public Relations Officer of the Ghana Prison Service, DSP Vitalis Aie. Good morning and thank you, sir, for coming. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So um, just with the Ebola issue, how prepared are the prison service or how aware is the service of Ebola? Thanks and good morning to your cherished viewers. The prison service as a state institution is very much prepared, just like the nation is also preparing. We have sent out a signal to all prisons in the country with details as to what to do, instructions as to what to do with regards to the Ebola. One, every prison is expected to have chlorine water, hand sanitizers at their receptions and where they admit prisoners where people visit. Before you enter, you wash hands. Before you leave, you wash hands. We've also initiated a move with the Ministry of Health. Education is ongoing. Inside the prisons? For prisoners? or Both for prisoners and then prison officers and even their spouses. Why? Because prisoners can go out. Mm -hmm. Not all of them. Some do go out. Not all of them go out. So the Ministry of Health has come to teach the prison authorities what is expected of them, their attitude towards people with Ebola, if they should visit. Again, we have decided that we will suspend external labor unless it is very crucial, very essential. What does that mean, external labor? Prisoners go out to do work for people. Okay. Because of the Ebola, it has been minimized. Or reduced. There are some we can't stop because what they do is very essential. For example, so going to look for firewood, okay. cook their food, going to the farm. They go out to look for firewood to cook the food that they eat in the prison. Sometimes, yes. Okay. And they go to the farms. You can't stop them from going to the farms. But we will stop people from coming to hire prisoners to do work for them for money. Oh, people come to the prisons to hire people. Yes. Okay. And, and they and then they pay to the prison service? To the state. Okay. Because don't forget, it is indicated in every sentence, IHL, in hard labor. Oh, Prisoners, so that's the hard labor bit. Yes, that is the hard labor bit. You have to be reformed, but you are punished for the offense you've committed outside. So, whilst in prison, once a while, you go out to work for the state. So, it's open. People can come and hire the prisoners to go and work for them, but that is for a fee, and mm. it's a fixed fee. Okay. Yes. But so the hard labor bit is your discretion in terms of the prison service because the judge wouldn't say exactly what you're going to be no, doing. No, no. And it should be hard labor. That is not dehumanizing. You don't just give them stones to crack if there's no construction work going on and they mm. need that. But if, if you know, like I'm um, the bee and, and you're, you're taking me to the farm and I can't work on the farm. No, you, you should be able to. If you can't work on the farm, you mustn't hold it. You should be pulling grasses out or transplanting something. The hard labor bits tells you that every prisoner should do some work for the state. Okay. Yes. Well, let me come to uh, some facts that I have, uh, which doesn't make me too excited because listen to this. Uh, our prisons are supposed to house 9,875 prisoners, yes. but we can really have some 14,585 prisoners in all our prisons in the country. We're told that our prisons are 48% overpopulated, and currently we have 3,004 remand prisoners in all our prisons. That's my focus, really, this morning. Uh, Mark Wayongo is the Interior Minister, and he believes that if we're able to try our remand prisoners, uh, some of them arrested wrongfully, then we can let them go. Uh, if we have a number of them, in fact, a number of them have also served for quite a number of years without trial. And those people, he also believes we should also get them freed. So I want to focus on this subject of remand prisoners for a little while. So let me start this way. How many prisoners are in a cell? Because now we know that you're overpopulated. Uh, it would be difficult to place a figure on how many prisoners are in a cell. 
It depends on the type of prison you are talking about. Okay. Are we dealing with a central prison, a local prison? Some prisons are not overpopulated. Others are very much overpopulated. So explain to us, because a lot of us are very familiar with the Southern prison. Yes. And then uh, the second D. Good. Our prisons are categorized into maximum, minimum, central, local, and settlement camp prisons. Settlement camp? Yes. Okay. So if you get the maximum prison, we have only one, which is the newly built Ankafo prison. A minimum prison is one, that is the Insawam prisons. These prisons take inmates that are of high risk to the state. Then you come to the central prisons, which are located in almost all regional capitals in this country. You have overcrowding in these prisons because we have a lot of courts there, high courts, district courts, magistrate courts, all trying cases yeah. and remanding people. The issue with remands being overpopulated in central prisons is because remand prisoners cannot be transferred. They cannot be transferred? No. But who determines where they are remanded? It's the court and where you commit the offense. If you commit an offense in war and your kid's supposed to be heard in war, you will not be brought to Accra. So you have okay. to stay in war because your court, the next court sitting will be in war. Okay, so what's the, the prison in Wa? Or is it a cell? It's a prison. Okay. It's a prison. But that prison, ideally, should house what kind of people? It was a local prison because Wa then was under the Upper East Region. Or the days that it was Upper Regions. Wa was, let's say, a district under Bolga. Since 1983, Wa has become a regional capital. And Wa prison is supposed to be a central prison. Mm. It was built in 1914, about a hundred and something years ago. No expansion has taken place. Mm. Population has grown. Crime has increased. We arrest, and it is this same prison you put both convict and remand prisoners in. That is why it's difficult for me to tell you how many people occupy a cell. It depends on the region and the type of prison. Mm. I get you. But if somebody is remanded, what does it mean? It means that your case is not determined yet. You are a suspect. You are alleged to have committed an offense and you are arrested. Okay. Your case is not determined. They can't put a sentence on you. So you're not guilty and you're not guilty? At all. You are not just guilty. Okay. Being in remand, you are not guilty at all. It is when your case is determined that you are classified as a prisoner. And that's why it's difficult for us to handle remand prisoners. Because we can't use them in any way to do any work. We can't order them like you can order or give instructions to a convict prisoner. Because they haven't been sentenced. No. You've been infringing okay. on their human so rights. So what do you do with them? Well, what we do with them is just to keep them, for the police to come for them and take them to court for the case to be determined. Hmm. So how come we have so many of them now? Well, it's Over because... Over 3,000 of them. It's because their cases have not been determined in court. But isn't somebody supposed to be doing a regular follow-up? Because if you're a man yes. and your case is still on the table, you know, then you have to be taking that particular file back and forth to court. Yes. You see, the criminal justice trail, we have the arresting authority, the prosecuting authority, the sentencing authority, and then we are just a receptacle. Mm. We receive, after all these three steps have been taking place, I mean, have taken place, arrest, prosecute, then sentence. If the sentence doesn't come, you remain a prisoner. Prosecution is not felony. You remain a remand prisoner. Yeah. So to go to court, there is a date in which every prisoner should go to court. And sometimes, when the day is due and the prisoner is not going to court, we will have to take you to the nearest police station mm -hmm. for them to take you to court. It's not all offenses that can also be bailed. So people are in prison for suspected murder, narcotics, rape and defilement. These categories And they're just there. You cannot be Nobody's them. doing the follow-up. No, but, but the fact is, is it your business to prompt someone that, listen, I have these people here mm. who are supposed to be tried in courts, or you haven't sentenced them and they're still on me? Yeah. Is it your job to prompt someone? That we do. We do that. 
on a regular basis. So is it because somebody is not listening to you? I mean, who who, who is in charge? Who is in charge? I mean, the the the, the judiciary will be in charge of of, of the judgments yes. or or the sentencing. But if they if they do not have enough facts, then they can't do that. No. I suppose. No. So it goes back to is it the police? Yeah, the prosecution. You've arrested. You have to prosecute. If you don't have enough evidence, you can't prosecute. And investigation can take a very long time. So when they're investigating somebody, he still has to be in prison. Mm. Depending, I just mentioned some offenses that are not bailable. You sometimes find people in prison, I mean, somebody is sent to remand and he's on bail. It depends on the offense he has committed. Yeah, but Another person is sent there, he can't be bailed. It determines the offense is either charged with or is being investigated about. Mm. And I mentioned them. One is murder, robbery, narcotics, and those that are very grave, very serious. Sometimes we hear somebody, you know, stealing uh, plantain, goats. Uh, sometimes they sound very funny, but these people are put on remand for a very long time. Do you have to make some sort of recommendation? Because for us, do we have anything like community service? No, we don't have anything like that in Ghana. So if, if, you, if you're sentenced, I mean, if, if, if you're tried for a certain crime and yeah. you're sentenced, you have only two options? If you are sent to court, there are options for the judge that are limited. One, he has the right to sentence you. Two, he can fine you. But mostly, he can caution you, depending on the offense. Mm. You'll be cautioned and asked to go home. That we have. You could also be fined to pay some amount of money then sentence is the final thing. With the fines, you realize that when somebody is fined, most often than not, they can't raise that money to pay the fines. So you end up going to prison for a definite term of imprisonment. Mm. Yeah. You know, this is hard because we're talking prisoners and not everybody who is in prison may be guilty of the crime that they are, su they are suspected to have, to have committed. And, and that's hard. But with this call uh, by the interior minister, what, what does the prison service think of it? It's very welcome news for us because we bear the brand of remand prisoners. When they're not going to court and they, they, they feel that they should be in court, we are the, the people they see first, they complain to us, they can, they can sometimes even misbehave. That's why we take them to the police. It's a call for all of us. Misbehave like how? Well, the man thinks that he should be in court. Why am I here? Why are you keeping me here? But don't forget that the man prisoner, let me be careful with my words, is not the property of the prison service. He's only being taken care of by the service. So even when the police don't come, you can't ask him to go home. It's just like me passing by and asking to take care of my child. I'm buying some cuckoo across the road and to come back. Until you come. I, I don't come. Say. What do you do? Will you let the child go, knowing that a car can knock him, or he can get lost, and it become a problem for all of us? No, being responsible and an adult, you keep the, the child. That's the position of the prison service when it comes to remand prisoners and courts. Mm. So it's we don't have the power to let them go. We don't have the power to let them go, and so we keep them to the police come back for them. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so when we come back, we'll be joined because, I mean, this definitely, there's so many angles that we have to look at. Remember, there's a Justice for All program that is supposed to be ongoing. What has happened to that? There are lawyers in this country. Some of them should be taking some of these issues. Uh, does it mean that all the prisoners on remand have no access to lawyers or nobody's interested in them? So when we come back, we'll be joined by Kwekwajiman uh, Budu. He's a lawyer and lecturer. A constitutional law and intellectual property law lecturer at Gempa. We will be back okay. in a little bit. So before you know the quick break, I was asking about the Justice for All program, and with over three thousand remand prisoners, why lawyers are not interested? It's, uh, lawyers are not interested, and thank you once again for um, this opportunity. Unfortunately, my voice will seem a bit hoarse, but mm. um, I'll just make do with it. Um, it's not as if lawyers are not interested, but that's one of the problems that we face with this whole remand prisoner issue. The fact is that all the various stakeholders have an essential role to play. 
in respect of um, curbing the numbers of persons we find in remand. Mm -hmm. So that's a process which has been started in the past. The judiciary has taken a lead in this particular respect. So there's a justice for all program which usually happens every year. Uh, hasn't that pro program been stalled in some, somehow? Not necessarily it happens, but the, the point is that that won't necessarily curb the problem. And that is why we have come in in this particular regard. And that's why we brought all the various stakeholders on board, including the judiciary, which is leading this particular process. So we have the judiciary, we have the prison service, we have the police service, we have the attorney general's department, civil society organizations as well, like we have at GEMPA, the Center for Law and Development Policy, and um, 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 some other st relevant stakeholders. And we have um, the remand task force which is basically a team of all the relevant stakeholders trying to find out how best to address this remand prisoner problem. Okay, so, 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 so far, where are you? How do we deal with the issue? There are a number of ways in which we can deal with the issue. Obviously, one of the ways that has always been adopted is conducting in um, house trials in, in, in all the prisons, in respect mm. to the prisons um, that we have earmarked. So what this particular project that we're embarking on so, is supposed to do is that we're adopting um, or targeting certain um, prisons in Ghana. We're, we're going to the western region, so Takrade and Takwa. We're also going to the central region, I believe. Um, we'll be going to Winneba and Ankafo, I think. Then we'll be going to the Ashanti region as well. So what we're going to do is that we're going to review lots of these remand cases. It, it, it's interesting um, 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 to note that about one in three of all persons on remand, or, or all persons in prison, prison custody are actually on remand. remand. And that's a startling statistic if you want to look at it at a certain level. As not too far away from us in Liberia, for example, it is recorded that between 80% and 90% of all persons in prison custody are actually on remand. And the problem is most of these people, at the end of the day, will receive non-custodial sentences once their case have been dealt with. Mm. And the sad part of this is that it actually infringes on the fundamental rights of the people in question because the Constitution actually gives every Ghanaian the right to a fair trial. Do you understand? So that if you have been arrested, you have been detained, and for two, three years, you haven't been tried. That's an infringement of your human rights. Mm. And that is what we are trying to address. Because yeah, like you rightly pointed if, out, you may or may not be guilty. The fact yeah. that you have been arrested and you've been charged for an offense doesn't necessarily presuppose that you're guilty. So if you're on remand, do you have any rights, especially if you spend you know, a year or two in prison? What can you do? That's where the stakeholders have to come in. The, this is not a blame game, trying to blame any particular person, because all the stakeholders are partially to blame. You ask the question, are the lawyers not interested? It's not as if the lawyers are not interested, but a lot of things go into these kinds of things. So sometimes you're not even able to um, have, you, you don't have the, the, the available um, tools or materials to work with. And the blame is shared by all the stakeholders. So that's why we are trying to in collaboration with all the stakeholders, try to more or less resolve this problem. Looking okay, so at when you say we, are you talking about <coughs> Ghanaian lawyers? Ghanaian lawyers, the judiciary, the prison service, the police, because we feel it's an important thing. It w nothing will make my senior brother here more happy than to be able to dispense with all the remand prisoners okay. in the various prisons in Ghana. I'll come back to when we are actually, you know, getting down to do the real mm -hmm. action because that's what will bring the relief i'll come back to that okay. uh, but i want to focus on the non-custodian -cust uh, sentences we mentioned i think we talked about it briefly but he yes. brought it up again yes. so what what would constitute that um non-custodial uh, it means that let me just try to give you a definition a non-custodial sentence is any kind of punishment or treatment other than time in prison or jail that can be given to a person who is convicted of committing a crime. Better still, a punishment that does not require a criminal to spend time in prison. Okay. So, with this, the judges have a discretion to either send you to prison or not. But as I said earlier, we have 
a great deal of them in the outside world. We have fines, we have probation, we have parole, we have binding over, that is you sign a bond mm -hmm. to do a good behavior. We have road traffic offenses. You don't send somebody who has run red to, to prison. <laughs> but here do we? Why not? People come to prison because of road traffic offenses. That's a shame. Absolute discharge, suspended sentence, community service, KFUs can be given to individuals. You've committed an offense at this place. By six, you should be asleep. Yeah, but you see, I okay, you, you finish with the list. Of movement of orders. <clears throat> All these are things that other countries have. We don't have that. What's in our statute books is what we operate with. Hmm. Fine, sentence, caution. Isn't it perhaps because of the limitations that we also have? Because clearly, we can't even identify houses like the way the other countries would, some of the other countries would. So for instance, if you are to sleep at six, by 6 p.m., yes. how would we even know for sure that this is where, exactly where you live and that at 6 p.m. you're sleeping? See, my brother mentioned challenges facing everybody. That could be an aspect. Because with this, everything is well structured. We don't have that here. We're not naming our streets. How many houses are numbered? Someone can give you a wrong address. Mm -hmm. So it's even difficult if somebody's on probation to track him to find out whether he's at home or he's not at home. Yeah. So until we put all these things in place, it will be a bit difficult. But clearly, there are some of the things that we can, we, we, for, for uh, like the community service, for instance. Isn't yes. it something that you can do whilst they are in prison? Or I don't know, how, how can it work? And in the way it works is that the person, instead of asking him to go to prison for three months, mm -hmm. two months, you can designate a place for him to clean. Maybe. Let's say we are talking about floods and cholera in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Ask him to clear all the sachet robbers from Dankwa Circle to Aquina Secondary School, or Togo Embassy. And somebody will watch that every day for some number of days. And the person goes away. Won't they run away? Because no. then how would we treat no, that them? That is why somebody will have to follow on the person to ensure that he is there doing that kind of work. If he finds that you have not come there, it means that you lose that right and you now go to prison. Mm -hmm. It's well explained. But it's not in our books. So until we put that as a law, as a country, that we should operate with this and that and that. No judge will ask anybody to go and do community service because you don't do that in isolation. Other people have to back you for mm -hmm. that to succeed. Okay. Yes. Mr. Ajimambudu, why prison? Why do we take people to prison? Prison, basically, it's within the realm of the criminal law. So, as, as has been rightly pointed out, if you commit a criminal offense and you are found guilty of that particular criminal offense, you can either be fined, you may be also sent to spend some time in prison or sometimes even both. It depends on the particular offense in question mm. for which you have been convicted yeah. um, or something like that. So, prison is an essential part and there's been many um, 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 theories or reasons why prison actually is good one way or the other. For example, it serves as a deterrent so that you know that if you commit a crime, you um, will spend so so and so amount of um, um, time in jail. And as a result of that, other people won't want to face the same consequence that you have faced. So that's one, um, one way you can look at it. It could also be as a means of um, preventing a similar offense from happening again, especially in relation to you, the convict. So we're keeping you away so that you don't have the opportunity to do that thing again. It could also be to reform your character. Mm. So there's reformation as, um, um, as part of, of, of that okay. as well. So you could go to prison and uh, one good thing that happens in the prisons of Ghana is that the prisoners are made to acquire certain um, um, valuable skills mm. which they would be able to use after they have um, served their time in prison. So you find out that sometimes you go to Zawam and they make very beautiful furniture. It, it's amazing. And, and, and these are prisoners who are in prison for a long period mm. of time and it's really good. But the idea of prison, especially in terms of remand persons, is what is troubling. Because legally those persons have no right to be in prison. They haven't been tried by a court of competent jurisdiction. They've only been accused of a crime, they've been charged with a crime, but yet they are pending trial. And this is where you find out that sometimes for over two, three, four, five years, and even in the extreme cases, eight years plus, 
people spend time in jail without ever being brought to court. And I'm saying this, not trying to put any blame mm -hmm. on any particular institution, but there are several challenges, several challenges um, okay. that, that go into these kinds of things. So what this project seeks to do is to try to curb this in the short term, yeah. as well as look at it in the longer term as well. So that's why- So when are you starting? When are we starting? The mm -hmm. trials are supposed to start on October 16th. In the prisons? In the prisons. Okay. So that's the whole idea of this project. And that's a short-term solution we are adopting in respect of the remand prisons. So we're going to get the courts to sit in the various prisons. And that's okay. why I'm saying that... And then the sentencing will be done, you know, right there and there. It will be done right there and there. So if you've been freed, that's you just exit. And, and you go. Because most of these people... And, and the interesting thing that you would also want to know is that sometimes someone um, is on remand for about three years for an offense which the maximum penalty he can serve even if he's convicted is like two years mm. so okay. automatically such a person has to be discharged he spent almost all the time that he would have spent if he was even convicted so that's one of the things that this particular project okay. seeks to do in the I've short term. I've got lots of questions in my head I wanted to ask you plenty uh, but I'm, I'm just being told that we we have to run because of time uh, it's a shame, but I want to say thank you for your time. Uh, but before we end, though, 